Hello, my name is Paul Pedersen, Chief of Police of the Greater Sudbury Police Service. And it's with great pride that I introduce you to this incredible video entitled Creating Awareness and Understanding of the Transgender Community. Um, this video has, is the result of a year and a half collaboration between the Greater Sudbury Police Service and the transgender community here in Northeastern Ontario. The purpose of the video is to provide your organization with information and points of discussion as your members reflect on their interactions with the transgender community and the opportunities to create stronger partnerships and build relationships. I would like to thank our inclusion team for putting together this video as well as the transgender community for putting their trust in the Greater Sudbury Police Service to portray their message. These types of collaborative efforts assist in the development of increased trust, acceptance and understanding for all. Thank you and we hope you will enjoy this production. I went through about four or five years without being able to pursue my, my dream, my passion, my interests, who I am. So in waking up every morning as your cisgender being a male is very difficult. I guess the best way to picture it would be how would you feel if you woke up in the opposite gender, gender's body? When you come out, uh, and this I can speak from my own experience, you are actually your own worst enemy. It hasn't been all rainbows and sunshine. It's been a lot of cloudy days and a lot of discrimination, a lot of teasing, uh, having people spit at me, having people throw things at me. I've had this, this one lady try to run me over with her car. And I used to pray to God like every night to change me into a female. And I thought I was going crazy. I thought I was some kind of freak. And then I discovered, oh, I'm transgender. And I didn't take that kindly. I was very depressed. I was very suicidal because of the perception of transgender people. I thought, if I'm transgender, I'm a freak. And I would rather be dead than live as a freak. There are three um, really useful concepts um, when we're talking about gender, and the first of all is the first of these is sex. Uh, sex refers to um, the idea of male and female, and it is something that is assigned to us at birth. So we're born, and someone declares it's a boy or it's a girl. And usually, sex refers to a visual inspection of our genitalia. Do we have a penis and testicles or do we have a vulva? And that decision is made for us by other people. Sex can also refer to things like chromosomal makeup. It can refer to uh, uh, secondary sex characteristics like how much body hair we have or the, the tone of our, the timbre of our voice, how deep or how high our voice is. The concept of gender is a little bit different. Uh, gender refers to the uh, behaviors, feelings, activities, ideas that we associate with being male or female. And so gender is typically understood as uh, being feminine or masculine. And if one is born male, it's anticipated that we will uh, develop uh, masculine gender characteristics. And those might include the things uh, in Western society, like loving sports, being aggressive, uh, dressing in a particular way. Um, and so sex and gender then are often thought to have a relationship whereby sex determines gender. Uh, this is problematic in the West uh, when we think about sex and gender as binaries. In Western culture, we have an obsession with gender binaries where if one is masculine, one cannot be feminine, and if one is male, one cannot be female by definition. So for those of us who stray between the two or who aren't comfortable with the definitions of one or the other, we often find ourselves in a difficult place. Um, and I would challenge people to think about anyone they know who perfectly fits the definition uh, traditional definition of male or female or masculine and feminine. We have essentially grown up with a binary system of looking at things very much in a black and white scenario. 
So essentially that relates into when we're, when we're talking or discussing gender, we look at things as either being male or female. Um, and what does that necessarily mean? Um, gender comes from our affiliation and our understanding of gender comes from social scripting. We aren't born with that identification. We're not born with that imprinting. Um, essentially, everybody is born either male or female, but our understanding of what that means to be male or female comes as we grow up with our social scripting. We are taught, if we are born male, we are taught through our social scripting this is what it means to be essentially male, what it means to look like a male, what it means to act like a male, um, how it means to look like a male. The same goes for a female. Uh, we are taught what it is to be, what it is to look like a female, what it is to act like a female, um, what it means to sound like a female. So we are taught those things. So when somebody comes in contact with another person, they're able to take that social scripting and say, Oh, yes, that's a male, that's a female. Within the transgender spectrum, that is where things sort of change because the social scripting has allowed us to identify if you're born, if you're born a gender, that's how we continue out the course of our life. When somebody comes out as being trans, that is taking that whole social scripting and saying, no. I'm going to completely upturn the apple cart and say, this is what it means to be essentially male. This is what it means to look essentially female. And that social script that somebody has that is transgender looks completely different than what mainstream society has grown up with and come to understand. A quick recap on sexual identity and gender definitions. What is sexual identity? Sexual identity refers to the concept at birth. A child is male or female according to their genitalia. Sexual identity characteristics may include visual inspection of genitalia, chromosomal makeup, secondary sex characteristics such as hair growth and body shape. The binary gender system, male or female, does not consider transgender persons. We live in a society where many believe that sex determines gender. However, this is not the case. What is gender? The traditional definition of gender is male or female. However, according to the Human Rights Code, gender also refers to how the individual will express femininity or masculinity. Remember, sexual identity is how you identify as sexually male or female, and gender characteristics come with one's chosen sexual identity. Gender identity is different. It's an innate feeling, a feeling of being uh, male or female, um, neither or both. Um, and, you know, the younger generation's getting all these in different, uh, is, is coming up with a whole spectrum of gender identities. Um, me, I'm kind of specific around female. <laughs> Uh, so for me, just getting from male to female was very difficult, and I experienced a lot of discrimination. So this is really important for me. Um, what amending the code does is gives clear and specific direction so that if I don't get that job, or I'm discriminated in, uh, in housing, that there's a remedy. There's a place for me to, to, to seek remedy, to, to correct a wrong. Um, so, and the other thing that's really good about Toby's Act is it tells our younger generation, um, it tells uh, that they belong, that the state says they lo you're, you're loved and protected, uh, and that you're included in Ontario society, so that's really important. One thing you have to understand about trans persons is we're afraid of everything. Our first belief when we start trying to even come to accept ourselves is nobody's going to accept us. The world's going to fall apart. Everything's going to blow up. There's no way anyone is going to be able to accept us. How do you tell if a person is trans? It's a big question. How are you going to tell is this person legitimately a trans person or not? 
Do they have to carry documentation? Do I have to carry documentation? Under the Ontario Human Rights Code, specifically spelled out, no. I do not require to carry any documentation to substantiate that or prove that I am trans. Human Rights Code and Toby's Act. Human Rights Code. The Ontario Human Rights Code is a provincial law that gives all people equal rights and opportunities without discrimination in specific areas such as housing and services. The code's goal is to prevent discrimination and harassment because of race, color, gender identity, gender expression, sex, sexual orientation, disability, creed, age, and other grounds. Toby's Act, also known as Bill 33, an act to amend the Human Rights Code with respect to gender identity and gender expression. It looks to codify protections for trans people, mimicking protection that already exists for much of the LGB community. This act is named after Toby Dancer, a trans woman who took her life due to social struggles in society. What seems to be the problem, Matt? I'm in the washroom and this guy's in there. I can't, I can't believe it. Just, why is he in there? He shouldn't be in there. That's so uncomfortable for me. Come out in a women's washroom and there's a man in there. Okay, we'll take care of the problem. Police. Excuse me, ma'am. Can we go outside and uh, talk to you for a minute? Is there a problem? I would just like to speak to you outside. Yes, sir. Thank you, man, for coming outside and accompanying us. Uh, the reason why I asked you to come outside was I wanted to uh, diffuse the situation. I uh, understand you uh, have the right to be in there. But, uh, may I please see some identification, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And, ma'am, how would you like to be addressed? Please, if you would, would you call me Rita, please? Okay, of course. Uh, Rita, I will go explain to the complainant uh, your right to, to be in the washroom, and I do apologize for this, uh, this confusion. Thank you so much for taking care of this. Calls to public washrooms will offer uniform officers both challenges and opportunities. Take these calls as a chance to educate the public and potential security officers on the Human Rights Code reminding them that transgender persons have the opportunity and right to use the bathroom of their choice. When dealing with the transgender person, refer to them in the gender that they appear as. If presented legal identification that doesn't match that gender, simply ask them what name they would like to be referred to as. Hello. Hi. I'm here for a police record check. What kind of work will you need that for? I'm working in the social work field. Perfect. You this form to fill out. Fill out the full form and just return to the desk after you're completed. Thank you. Over to the side door to discuss your record check? Um, sure. So I noticed on your form that you had two names on here. What name would you prefer on your final record check? Vincent. Okay. So just to let you know, your final form will only have Vincent listed on there as your name. Thank you. While a complete criminal record check will be done on all of the names provided on the form, the applicant should have the option to choose the name that will appear on the final form. This helps to prevent the potential discrimination against the person when they apply for a job or volunteer position. In 2009, there was a survey that was created in Toronto, and it was from this project called the TransPulse Project. And this survey um, was sent out to trans people, and they were instructed to pass on the survey to other trans people they knew, and so it reached 433 
trans people across the province. And in the survey, they asked numerous questions about employment, housing, income, many different aspects of lives of trans people in Ontario. Their findings were really startling. So out of the people surveyed, 71% had some form of post-secondary education, whether it be university, college, or trade school. But 50% of the people surveyed made less than $15,000 a year. And that brings up a lot of questions. Like, why is that? Why are these educated people making less than $15,000 a year. It's ridiculous. And there are a number of issues. So 29% of these people surveyed said that they could not receive a reference from a previous employer because they are trans. When you look at issues with employment, you encounter this dilemma. Do you out yourself for a position or do you accept a position that pays less and maintain your privacy? So if you're somebody who completed your education under your previous name and you are not able to have your identification changed or your degree changed to reflect your new name, in order to prove that you have that education, you have to out yourself. So that really becomes a barrier. Details for discussion within your organization. Would your place of employment be considered open and receptive to a transgender employee? Should training be offered to employees to increase an understanding and awareness on LGBT issues? Are there internal policies and procedures that need to be rewritten in a more inclusive context? Are your recruitment campaigns inclusive to the LGBT community? When you're looking underneath the umbrella, underneath what would be considered transgender, there are many different subsections. One of the subsections that I think that is the most complicated and the most intricate because it is the foundation and the beginning is the part where somebody will experiment with cross-dressing. Cross-dressing essentially is where somebody could either A, um, cross-dress um, in the opposite gender's clothing. That could essentially just be something that an individual will experiment with from time to time during the course of their life. It is more along the lines, if I could say loosely, a hobby. It is something that they enjoy doing. However, the individual will never um, live full time as the opposite gender because they do identify with their birth gender. They are comfortable with living a majority of their life in their birth gender Cross-dressing is just a secondary factor which they um, receive enjoyment out of um, participating in over the course of their lifetime. However, cross-dressing also is the first start to somebody coming to terms with their gender identity. And that is very crucial for somebody when they're starting what we would consider the transition process and looking at where they fall underneath the transgender umbrella. Usually individuals who have come to the realization that they are transgender, the first step is that they will start cross-dressing. And that cross-dressing then leads them into that realization as to whether or not this is just something that they do as essentially a pastime, or is this something that they want to explore in greater depth um, is this something that they're willing to do on a full-time basis? Um, if they choose to do it on a full-time basis, then the next step is the exploration around how far they're going to go in that transition, whether they will actually explore um, hormone replacement therapy, will they explore different cosmetic um, procedures, will they consider the final step, which is uh, SRS, which is sexual reassignment surgery? 
when I was younger, I was with Children's Aid Society, and uh, I wasn't allowed to wear the clothes I felt comfortable in. So I started to get involved in shoplifting to get the clothes that they wouldn't buy for me. And I was living in foster homes and stuff like that, so it wasn't allowed there. So it made my life pretty hard. Uh, at the age of 13, I tried to commit suicide for my first time. After a depression, it was either to transition or commit suicide. So I opted for the, the coming out. I did go see a suicide therapist once because suicide is a very common issue for transgender people. So I went through that and I went through my own psychiatrist also. And even then, since I was young, I obviously didn't qualify for hormones and getting support is very difficult, especially for Ontario. I know this is a little bit easier in British Columbia. Um, Northern Ontario has quite difficulties when it comes to trying to get support. Actually, the figure here in Ontario as of 2011 is 43% of trans people will either attempt or commit suicide at some point. Take time as an organization to discuss the social challenges facing the transgender community. Consider interactions they may potentially have with members of the transgender community. Consider how these interactions may impact the person's self-esteem and comfort. Are there processes that could be implemented to increase the ease of these interactions? The display of a symbol indicating the employee is approachable or an ally of the LGBT community will help to create this needed trust. I hid it as best as I could all through high school and college. So until I was 19, I didn't say anything. And now my dad has actually paid for me to legally change my name. Be yourself. Don't try to bury it in the back of the closet because it's not going to work. Like, from as soon as you realize something's wrong, start talking about it. Because if you don't start talking about it right away, in 10 years when you do start talking about it, they'll be like, well, why didn't you say something five, 10 years ago? Like, obviously it's not true if you're only saying this now. And that was the big, that's the biggest thing is start saying something right away. Definitely wait until you're ready to come out. And when you do it, don't just drop it on them. Just sort of ease into it so it's easier for them to handle it. The only difference between a closet and a coffin is one is standing up and the other is laying down. Be yourself. Um, don't care about what other people think or say about you. They don't know what's in your heart. Today my outlook on life is be who you are, not what the world wants you to be. Or this life might not have turned out to be what you want it to be. but. You are here now, so let's dance. I only have one life and I'm gonna live it being who I am. Advice for somebody who is just coming out as trans is be happy with who you are and don't give up. Do the little things that help too, such as get makeup, get, well, I'm obviously talking from a male to female standpoint, get makeup, do skincare, make your hair you know, feminine, be hygienic. During this whole experience, I know that they've had their own internal struggles that they've worked through, but they found the love within themselves to continue to accept me as their son. I've been given the gift and the privilege of being a trans woman, a woman who happens to be transgender. It's more than a man more than a woman. It's far more complex than that. I am grateful for the privilege of being who I am. Our motto is our community, our commitment. Let's all commit to a community where we can be ourselves.
the past can be a lesson, but it won't define what's underneath. We'll be the inspiration for future generations. We'll light the fire, let's light the fire so everyone can feel it. If we could see beyond our fear, shatter insecurities, we'd realize we're strong enough to write our own beginnings. What a world we'd create if we stood hand in hand as we helped one another find courage to stand courage to stand we shed tears we felt pain sometimes we forget that we feel love from the same place we grow and we that we're always teaching one another what it means to change the world.